Hello people, how are you guys doing? Little Guy G here and welcome to another Payday 2 video and in today's video I'm just going to be going over the new skills with update 100 just for those people who are confused on the new skills and want to know um, a bit more about them or want to know like some good builds or uh, maybe if you played the older with the older skills you might want to think well I'll use this build how can I remake that build into this into this skill tree that is what I'm here for. That is what I'm here for you today. I'm going to be focusing on the common skill skill trees. For example, like the silent killer skills, the stealth skills, the armor skills, the dodge builds. I'm going to be going over all of that. It's going to be quite a lengthy video. Hence why this video might be late to the prior of the release of update 100. I do apologize. But this is going to be a lengthy video for me to make. And I really would appreciate if you guys would leave a like on the video and subscribe and uh let leave a comment down below saying what other what other um skills that i didn't cover maybe use a, a certain skill tree or a certain build let me know down in the comments guys i would really really appreciate it if you would let me know on if i miss anything out if i miss even the tiniest bit of detail i want to cover that and i want to reply so please comment down below and definitely hit subscribe if you want to have new uh, payday 2 content on the channel so anyway Let's get into this. So, we're going to start off with what these new skills look like and how what has changed. And you can obviously see that stuff has changed. So, we still got Mastermind, Enforcer, Technician, Ghost, and Fugitive. We got all that, okay? We have the five skill trees. But the skill trees now, instead of it being um, one column split into three, three, three sections, it is now three sections of two columns. So what this means is that we have Medic, Controller, and Sharpshooter for the Mastermind. Now, Sharpshooter focuses on weapon stability, accuracy, um, and at the top one, ammo efficiency. Getting three headshots in less than six seconds will refill one bullet to your used weapon. So basically, what that means is that um, less than six seconds, basically getting three headshots in less than six seconds, if you go bang, 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 you'll refill one bullet into your used weapon. That's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. I mean, that'd be good for using, you know, like, um, single shot weapons like the M308. But anyway, we're going to not just focus on ammo efficiency. So if you want to go down the medic tree, which I'm going to quickly show you here. If you want to go down the medic tree, you can reach Inspire at the top. Everyone knows what Inspire is. If you ace it, uh, if you press F, you can shout your teammates to get the F up. Uh, if we go down this way, we can, this is the way towards if you want to basically get Joker. And, um... Dominator, which has been changed to Confident, which is basically your intimidation techniques, and obviously Stockholm Syndrome, which makes you, um, so this has changed a bit now. Instead of it just being hostages that revive you, it is now changed to civilians are now intimidated by the noise you make, so it's kind of changed from another uh, skill, which I can't remember, you might have to remind me. Um, then obviously we have Hostage Taker on the next column up. So... I've covered ammo efficiency, as you, as you see, I've just gone up here. High value target is something new as well. So it's aggressive reload. So increase your reload speed with SMGs, assault rifles, and sniper rifles. That's a pretty cool feature to have. Marksman, eight weapon accuracy. And then ace, you gain 20% accuracy bonus while aiming down the sights. High value target, enemies marked take 15% more damage. Kind of similar to uh, another previous skill. So anyway... You're probably thinking, well, now you just wasted all your money. Little guy, wasted all your money, so you're going to have to respec. That's the cool thing. You see, with this skill tree, you can actually remove shit. So I could take all of this out right now if I wanted to. And look, I didn't lose any money. I didn't lose any money. I have just reset all my skills and stuff, which is awesome. Absolutely awesome. So instead of you having to respec your skill tree, you can just just do this so if you think oh, i don't want hostage taker oh, i'm gonna go back down and spend my skill uh, skill points on another tree you can do that so yeah that's the master my skill tree every top tier is inspire hostage taker and ammo efficiency so medic like i said just goes across if you want to become a medic in the field and help out you can either go towards these um little first aid kits here which were in the fugitive skill tree here or you can go to Combat Doctor straight away and have two med bags to help your team out. So it gives you that kind of option already. So it's really, really cool to have that option, whether or not you want to be 
just a small time medic or you want to be the main medic of the team like if you want to heal yourself like once and heal other people once with the first aid kits or you want to use the medic bag and the big medic bags to help your team out it's the same with it's the same with the other trees so you could have joker and partners in crime which increases your um your confident or your dominator um health and just increases your converted um hostage health same with stockholm syndrome as well it's really really cool it gives you a lot more variety of what to go up. and you can go up to the last tier which is hostage taker it's really really cool and it's the same with i've covered this tree already as well it goes with sharpshoot it just basically is for your rifles and your accuracy and your reload time which is awesome we're now going to move on to enforcer now so what enforcer is we have shotgunner tank and ammo specialist shotgunner pretty much it says it right there so this is all of your tips and tricks you need for a shotgun build if you want to if you want to go for a shotgun build all of these skills would be awesome for you if you're a shotgunner this would be an awesome 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 um tree to go down because as you can see we have underdog which if there are three or more enemies within 18 meters of you you receive a 15 percent damage bonus which is your first unlock then you've got shotgun impact and shotgun CQB, which is your reload speed with shotguns is increased. And with shotgun impact, it basically just makes you deal more damage with shotguns. And the basic is your weapon stability with shotguns. Close by, you can now hit fire with shotguns while sprinting. This is really, really helpful. This really is helpful. And then if you ace it, your rate of fire is increased by 35%, 35% while firing from the hit with single shot shotguns. That's awesome. So if you have like a locomotive shotgun with close buy on, you can just spray, spray, spray. So that's a really, really cool um, skill to have. Far away, your accuracy bonus while aiming down the sights for shotguns is increased by 40%. And then you gain 50% increased effective range with shotguns while aiming down the sight when you ace it. Which is also super, super cool. So if you had a locomotive shotgun and you wanted range on it, you could use far, far away. And you can have like even more range on the locomotive shotgun. Because to be fair... The locomotive already has a bit of range on it, and with this, it's pretty much a sniper. Which I don't know if it's overpowered or if it's just straight up helpful. You guys can decide that yourselves. Right, and then obviously at the top, we have overkill. Which is, when you kill an enemy with a shotgun or the uh, the saw, you receive a 75% 70, damage increase for 20 seconds. So obviously, this I believe this unlocks the saw for you to use as well. Or actually, speaking of that, if you go into your... Um, your weapons here let me just get it you don't need to actually unlock the saw let me go yeah the saw's already unlocked there's no skill needed to unlock the saw it's the same with the akimbo weapons so you don't even need to unlock the akimbo weapons with a skill so that is actually really 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 cool so if you wanted to use a saw anyway you can do that and with overkill uh with the saw just use the saw and then you get a 75 percent damage increase that's awesome that's absolutely awesome there so that covers the shotgunner so the shotgunner is basically i think this is going to be a really popular tree to go down because a lot of people use um the locomotive and the judge shotgun as well i forgot to mention that now we're going to go down tank so i've covered mouse mine we're going to go down tank guys let me just take all these trees bit out sorry in case we don't have enough points uh, in case i forget so we have the tank so Resilience it increases your armor recovery rate by 50% and it reduces the visual flex duration of flashbangs for those who remember there was a um, There was a skill in the previous skill tree called stun resistance This basically attaches to stun resistance and has put it into the ace version of resilience So if you ace this if you get flashbanged, literally the effect goes away within like a second or two Which is super super helpful because we get flashbanged a shit ton in this game if you haven't already noticed so increases your armor recovery rate by 15%. This is also really, really helpful because obviously this, this tree is to do with your armor and like how much armor you have. So you can go down these two routes here. So die hard, take 50% less damage while interacting with objects. Increase the armor, but all ballistic vests by 20. It was the same skill was in the fugitive skill tree, but now they moved it to the enforcer and made it. So it makes a lot more sense. So it does make a lot more sense here because, um, Having armor traits and future save that I last remember didn't make quite sense because it obviously it buffed your ballistic vests, which um, is cool that it's here now because you can buff it even more, which is really, really cool. 
And then obviously, hasn't changed a bit, we have Transporter, so you can throw bags 50% further. For each 10 armor points, the bag movement penalty is reduced by 1%. So instead of it being that with any armor type, your, um, it doesn't matter what armor you wear, you will move 30% faster with bags, I believe it was. Um, but so now it's for each 10 armor points, the bag movement penalty is reduced by 1%. So if you were to wear a suit, obviously you'd go faster. If you were to wear a, um, you know, if you were to wear a massive, uh, like, Iron Man, the the, com the combined tactical vest, you'll move slower, but you can see that it, the movement penalty would be reduced, so you can feel that you would go faster with it. So, that's really, really cool. So, we're bullseye, so we generate five armor for each successful headshot. This cannot occur more than once every two seconds. And then the ace is you generate an additional 20% of armor for each successful headshot. Shock and all. Increases the armor recovery rate and your crew by 25%. Enables your weapons to have a chance to knock back shields. This one, in my opinion, isn't that helpful. Um, you could just you just do a basic one because it increases the armor recovery rate. But for this one, if it was for the shields, I guess it'd be helpful. But really, you could just jump around the shield and shoot the shield in the back. Because shields are getting easier to kill with these shotguns now. Then, of course, we have Iron Man, which is your turtle armor value is increased by 30%. And then if you ace it, you unlock the big armor. I'll show you what that looks like right here. You unlock this um, combine tactical vest. Keep in mind though, the grinder still is to say when you're wearing this 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 thing here. So I'm gonna switch back to my lightweight ballistic vest. So that covers tank. Okay, this is gonna be a lengthy video, like I said. Okay, so that covers tanks. So that is for your armor. If you wanna. Um, get good re armor recovery rates and you want to go into being a tank for the group and you sponge all the damage go into tank okay ammo specialist so this determines how much ammo you pick up on the field and how much ammo you can carry for you and your teammates so when you go into it you have scavenger which is your ammo box pickup range is increased by 50 percent every sixth enemy kill you drop will drop an extra ammo box so what that means is that if you to kill one two three four five they all drop, you know, they all drop an ammo box. And on the sixth kill, they drop two ammo boxes, which is actually quite helpful. Um, it kind of, um, it's good that, because fully loaded here, there's no point in having it if this is about, because you're going to be picking up a shit ton of ammo anyway, because um, they buff the ammo drops as well, I believe. Uh, Bullet Storm. So this hasn't changed, I don't think. So ammo bags placed by you grant players the ability to shoot without depleting the ammunition for up to five seconds. So instead of it just being you now, it's now the entire team. So, this used to be, so if you had to place an iron bag down, you have five seconds of just spraying and praying with your gun without losing ammo, which is awesome. And then the ace version um, increases it by up to 15 seconds. So, now it's, instead of it being just you, if you used to say, if you had a team of four and you said, okay, I'm putting an ammo bag down, don't worry about ammo for another 15 seconds, get your teammates to spray and pray. For example, if there's a, if there's a bulldozer you're having trouble with, and you need ammo, put the ammo bag down, and then all your teammates just spray at the bulldozer. Like, that's a good example of Bullet Storm. Portable saw unlocks the over portable saw for you to use as a secondary weapon. So, this, read this carefully, it's not for you to use as a weapon, because it is a primary weapon, but this unlocks it to use as a secondary weapon. And then, obviously, the eight is you gain an extra saw blade for your portable saw. So, that's pretty handy if you're doing like a stealth heist and you want to be. Uh, a Sora for a stealth heist. So, Saw Massacre. Reducing the wear down of um, the wear down of blades on enemies by 50%. What this means is that um, when you're um, sawing a safe, it does take up a lot of the ammo. But for this one, when you saw an enemy, it reduces the rare and basically it doesn't use up as much ammo by 50%, which is actually really, really good for you to think about that. For example, if you wanted to kill a bulldozer easily, because the saw is powerful on the bulldozer, especially after Berserker, if you had Berserker. I don't know if it's um, in the skill tree now. I don't know if it is, but back back when the old skill trees were available, people used to have Berserker on, and then just ran into, and with Swan Song as well, and just ran into a shield, and just sprayed it down with a saw, uh, or a bulldozer, sorry, sprayed it down with a saw, and it was just so easy to kill. So that, that's just one of the good things about Saw Massacre as well. Anyway, extra lead. You can now place down two ammo bags instead of just one. Each ammo bag contains an additional 200% ammunition. So basically, this is just the, the ammo bags, the buffed ammo bags that we know and love. 
Then the final one is fully loaded, which is just um, your carry capacity is increased. And with the Ace, increases the ammo count you gain from ammo boxes by 75%. You also gain a 5% base chance to get a throwable from an ammo box. The best chance is increased by 1% for each ammo box you pick up. That's kind of cool, actually. Um, I believe they changed fully load a bit. So fully load is not that useful any. That is actually useful. So it gives you a 5% base chance of picking up a, a throwable. So if you throw a grenade and you wanted uh, like a spare grenade, just run round to ammo boxes and you have a chance to pick up another grenade. That's absolutely crazy. So yeah, that covers ammo specialist. Okay, we're halfway there, guys, through the video. Um, like I said, if you have any suggestions or any skill trees you want me to cover, uh, type of builds, I will do that for you. So, technician. A lot of shit has changed for technician, okay? A lot of stuff has changed. I'm not big on a technician build, but if you guys want me to cover one, I can definitely, definitely do that. Anyway, let's get into it. So, the three columns we have are engineer, breacher, and oppressor. We're going to start with Engineer, okay? Third law, the cost of deploying a sentry gun is reduced by 56%. Okay, so when you put down a sentry gun, it basically is quicker. Sentry gun can gain now a protective shield. So uh, when cops shoot at it, it's not going to do shit to the sentry gun because it's got a shield on it, which is really, really cool. So these two columns here, we have Eco Sentry. The cost of deploying a sentry gun is reduced uh, to 48%. And your sentry gun gain 150% increased health that's kind of cool um because if you have um two sentry guns you can have i believe you can have up to like six sentry guns in this which is crazy i mean that's absolutely crazy um but yeah and now inc you can have increased health with your sentry guns which is really really cool um like i said really helpful the sentry target targeting package um your sentry gunning uh, your sentry guns gain a hundred percent increase in accuracy. That's actually really cool um, Very helpful just and then the ace version is your sentry guns rotation speed is increased by 150 percent Your sentry guns also have 50 percent more ammunition That is holly holly good. So um, I believe if you were to have if say you combined extra lead with fully loaded and this 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 whole tree that could just be your uh, alone. Like if you had fully loaded, just to pick up ammo from the dead bodies that the sentry guns killed. You see, that's a that's a whole build in itself. Do you know what I mean? So I'm kind of building a. I'm already building a build for you guys. You see, so um, having fully loaded to pick up the am ammunition for the sentry guns. That's really really cool. Um, but anyway, moving on, we have engineering. So you can now select a less noisy version of sentry guns, making them much less likely to be targeted by enemies. That's really cool. So what this means is that they're going to be focused on you more of the time, okay? But the sentry guns are going to still be shooting at them, doing a fuck ton of damage, which is really, really cool. Um, you could start set up ambushes and stuff. Like, say on the transport heist, you could set up ambushes and stuff for snipers. That'd be super, super cool. Um, Jack full trays now. You can de you can deploy and interact with all deployables 50% faster. You can now equip a secondary deployable bag with you if your deployable is equipped as a secondary deployable. You can now bring half of what you would bring if it was equipped. So what this means is that you can bring another deployable with you, I guess. I believe it's, you can bring any deployable, I guess. Um, but if you're a technician, you could put down your sentries and then put down your C4s. It basically works like that. Then tower defense this is really really cool you can now carry one extra sentry gun and additional two extra sentry guns so i think you can carry up to actually no you can carry up to four yeah you can count to four paley's posted a new announcement um sorry not six you can count to, uh, to four i believe let me check let me double check with this stuff yeah i guess it's four you can carry f which is that's an increase by itself that's that's crazy um but yeah, guys, um, I don't know. I, I think I saw a video where you could carry six. Or did they nerf that? They might have nerfed it. Let me know in the comments, like I said, um, if they have nerfed it. Because I'm not too sure. Like I said, I'm not big on technician. So I'm, I don't know many good technician builds. So, 
Besides that malarkey, we have Breacher. Let's go into the Breacher tree. So this is to do with, I believe, your drill efficiencies. Like, you've got Drill Sergeant here. Um, and also, it's your Trip Mines as well. We can increase the rate of Trip Mines, which is really, really cool. So, what do we get with Hardware Experts? So, Hardware Experts, you fix drills and saws. 25% faster. Drills and saws are also silent. Civilians and guards must see the drill or saw now to become alerted. Uh, gives your drills and saws a 10% chance to automatically restart after breaking. So what's cool about this is that you're basically getting two skills in one. <laughs> so if you unlock this, you automatically get, um, you know, hardware expert. And then you also get silent drilling on top of that. So this is a must, must get if you're a stealth builder as well. And if you want to stealthily stealth stealth sort into things <laughs> if you wanted to stealth sort into things this is really really helpful um but let's go on to the next one drill sergeant holy shit this began off for 20 minutes i can't believe i have this is the longest commentary i've done holy shit um your drill and saw timer is decreased by 50 percent so what this is basically means is just that uh your your drill and saw timers it's basically just makes it quicker for you to get into the vaults and stuff. It decreases the time it takes to get into the vault. That's basically what it means. It doesn't take much, that much time. Uh, we've got Kickstarter here as well. I'll go on this one a bit. So, Kickstarter. Your drills and swords gain an additional 20% chance to automatically restart. Then, enables the ability to reset a broken drill or saw with a melee attack. The ability has a 50% chance to fix the drill or saw. The ability can only be used once per time the drill or saw is broken. So what this means, this is really cool. What this means is that if a, if a, if a, uh, a drill or saw has broken down, you can melee it and it could... It's it's 50-50 chance. This is really, really cool. If you to melee it, it'll just kickstart back up again. It'll just start again, which is just freaking, like, the most British way of doing it. For example, if your control is broken... You know, you'd be tapping, like, I'm getting my Xbox controller here. It's like, oh, tap it, it might work, it might work. Or take the batteries out and put it back in again. Like, it's a really, really cool skill. I like this. Uh, this is really, really interesting. But anyway, we're going to go along this side here, which is the uh, basically your C4 and trip mine skills. So, for those interested in the trip mine skills, this is what it is, basically. So, we have combat engineering, which is the radius of your trip mine explosion increased by 30. So, it basically kills more cops in the, if they're around the trip mine your trip mine damage is increased by 50 percent so same again it increases you can increase the radius and the damage at the same time if you have combat engineering which is really really useful uh, more firepower so you gain one more shape charge and four more trip mines you gain two more shape charges and seven more trip mines so that's really really cool um yeah really really cool and then we have fire trap which is the final perk here uh, your trip mines now spread fire um, around the area of detonation for 10 seconds in a 7.5 meter diameter. Say if you're playing a defense mission and you're in a room covering a server or something. Uh, let's take, uh, let's take, oh, let's take framing frames day three for example. You know that fucking achievement with the power to never turn it off, right? You could literally have a trip mine in that area, right, where the power is, and um, after you detonate the trip mine, there will be fire spread. So if there's another cop coming over, he'll just be burnt as well. So if you guys still want that achievement, I still need that achievement. You can so do it with fire trap. That is insane. Okay. So anyway, let's move on to the. Right, let me take down these ones because I don't have enough uh, enough skills and shit to do this, son. So I named it Silent Killer because I was going to make a Silent Killer tree. Uh, but anyway. This is a presser. This is basically like in terms of your weapon accuracy, uh, hit fire accuracy, and all that shit. So base and body enterprise. I need to look into this big time because this looks really interesting. Steady grip. You gain one ace. It's sixty percent weapon stability. Basically standard stuff, and also um, basic is eight weapon accuracy as well. So standard stuff. Heavy impact. So uh, your shot. This actually, this is interesting. Your shots have five percent chance to stagger all enemies except bulldozers and Captain Winters, so that's kind of cool. Increase your stagger chance to 20 percent. Sorry. Um, so when you shoot them, it has twenty percent to start stagger them, which is pretty cool. Fire control. You gain twelve weapon accuracy while firing from the hip, and your accuracy penalty is decreased by twenty percent when shooting while moving. 
so kind of cool once again. Surefire, your SMGs, LMGs and assault rifles gain 50 more bullets in their magazines. This does not affect lock and load a skill. Where is the lock and load a skill? I have no idea. Where, where is lock and load? Which one was lock and load? <laughs> Where's lock and load? Hang on, let me, let me, cause I, I, need, I need to compare this for you guys. I need to compare this for you. Uh, lock and load, lock and load, lock and load, lock and load. I must find it. I, I'm not used to this skill tree, okay, guys? Give me a fucking break. <laughs> uh, okay, let's leave it for now. Let's leave it. Let's just leave it for now, okay? Um, so, yeah, lock and load. Um, oh, there's lock and load. I oh, found it. <laughs> so, what's lock and load do? You can now hit fire with your weapons while sprinting. Okay, so that's basically the standard. Um, if you wanted to just run like a normal... Even with a shotgun build as well. Um you to um uh, actually no that's wrong because cl uh, close by has you be able to hit fire your shotguns while sprinting so i'm wrong in that department so i do apologize for that um be a lock and load here um you can now hit fire with your weapons while sprinting killing two enemies with smgs lmgs and sight rifles with special weapons set on automatic fire mode will reduce your next reload time up to 60 percent so that's really cool. So if you to just kill two enemies, you can then just reload like quicker. So that's really really cool, and also increase your magazine as well. So you have surefire here as well. Your ranged weapons can now pierce through enemy body armor. So for those who um, hate those, I fucking hate them. They're the armored normal cops, and you have to shoot them in the head. You can just shoot them in the chest if you have this. So that's really really cool. Just get a fucking what do you call it? A sniper rifle. Pew dead they are done you know they are absolutely dead so then we have body enterprise here which is all right <coughs> last of three 18.75 percent from body from bonus headshot damage is permanently applied to hitting enemies on the body the skill is only activated by smgs lmgs assault rifles or special weapons fired in automatic fire mode then increases it to 62.5 percent of bonus headshot damage is permanently applied to hitting enemies in the body Blah, 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 blah. So, <laughs> what this means, basically what this means is that 18.5% um, of bonus headshot damage is permanently applied to hitting the enemies to the body. So what this means is that um, when you shoot someone in the head, obviously like that's a pretty much an instant kill, or, like two shots to the head is an instant kill. If you'd ace this um, and shoot them in the body, you would basically ha um, have the same amount of headshot damage as you would in the body to, as you would if you had to shoot them in the head and it would probably increase the headshot damage as well so that's really really cool um that makes you can make so many op builds with that so imagine silent killer with body enterprise holy shit that would be op in my eyes anyway because like you shoot them in the head a few times but if you need to spray them into the body that would just do insane amount of damage boy so yeah that is the technician tree now we're going to move on to my favourite skill tree, the ghost tree. Now, why is this my favourite, you ask? Because it's all about stealth. I like stealth in Payday 2. Stealth in Payday 2 is cool. Stealth in Payday 2 is life. Anyway, let's look at Shinobi, Artful Dodger, and Silent Killer, which is another build along itself. And everyone likes Silent Killer. I love Silent Killer. It just makes it so cool. Anyway, we're going to go on Shinobi. So, Shinobi... Obviously, we have Chameleon. Nothing much has changed. Uh, but you can pick up items in casing mode. Uh, that was with a fugitive skill tree before. Six cents. Getting the ability to automatically mark enemies within a 10 meter radius when you stand still. This is basically, you know, the usual stuff. Then the ace to also gain access to all insider assets. So that would have been cleaner. But I believe they changed the six cents. Because cleaner now is you gain one additional body bag in your inventory. Also increase the body bag inventory space to th to three from two. Kind of cool. You gain the ability to place two body bag cases. So if you're going to go silent, for example, if you're doing like go bank and you want to kill bodies out in the street, then get them inside. Um, this would be really cool for you. So I advise you take this skill along. Uh, nimble. You gain the ability to disable one camera from detecting you and your crew. Effect lasts for 25 seconds. And then your lockpick is 50% faster. You also gain the ability to lockpick safes. That's kind of cool. So you can disable one camera 
Um, like, I think it's only one in the heist, I believe so. Uh, that's really cool. Or maybe after 25 seconds, you can then disable another camera, which is really, really cool. Uh, ECM overdrive, your ECM jammer feedback duration is increased by 25%, and then your ECM can be used to open certain doors. Yeah, that's the same as before. Nothing much has changed. It's an awesome skill for stealth. ECM specialists, um... Literally the same, um, just you can place down two ECM jammers and the effect is increased as well and it lasts longer. And pages is delayed by the ECM as well. So that's really, really cool. So that is the stealth skill shit. If you want to be a stealthy guy, you go for these skills right here. That is what I'm looking for. And I'm also going to incorporate Mastermind with the confident um, skills and um, some of the technician skills like Hardware Expert. And some fugitive skills as well, so you have to look out for that. You might have to look out for that. Um, Arthur Dodger. So this is a lot to do with your stealth, um, sorry, your dodge builds as well. So a lot of your stuff is to do with your dodge builds here. So, inner pocket. Increased, increased the concealment of melee weapons by 2. And increased the concealment of all ballistic vests by 4. Uh, so I've got to cover duck and cover. Your stamina starts regenerating 25% earlier, 20%. 25% faster, you also sprint 25% faster, so basically increases your stamina and your re regen of stamina and how fast you can sprint, which is really, really cool. Um, inner pockets, increase your concealment of melee weapons by 2, and then increase the concealment of, concealment of ballistic vest by 4. So that's really cool for if you're going from like a stealth into a loud, so if you were to wear a ballistic vest, it would um, conceal you even more uh, with this skill, that's really cool, with inner pockets. Parkour, parkour. You gain 10% additional movement speed and 20% increased speed while climbing ladders. You gain the ability to sprint in any direction. Like, that is freaking cool. I mean, having that unlocked early on is, like, super cool. I mean, in Penny the Heights, you could just sprint in any direction anyway. And it kind of got annoying how, in this one, they just restricted you to sprint in one direction. But, if you wanted to be a dodgy guy and just get from point A to point B, just dodging, not giving a fuck. Um, you should use parkour, that's awesome. Uh, die in need. Uh, when your armor breaks, the first shot on every enemy will cause that enemy to stagger. That is fucking great. So, if you run out of ar armor, and if you have an SMG or something, you just spray the guys in the room down. They will all stagger, not shoot you. Then you just run out of the room and regen your armor. That's insane. Like, that's an awesome skill. Shockproof is the same, um, when tased, the shock effect has 30% chance to backfire on the taser. Well, basically, when you're getting tased, um, it has a 30% chance to just, the taser will get shocked back, and will go, ugh, and just get shot back, um, at him. Uh, and then when tased, you're able to free yourself from the taser by interacting with it within two seconds of getting tased. Which is really cool, um, I don't know how that would work, really. I guess you just shoot him, but shooting's the only way to counter it. But yeah, shotproof's still a, shotproof's really still a good perk, and also we have sneaky bastard, which is basically the whole dodge malarkey thing. So you gain one percent dodge chance every three points of concealment, under thirty-five up to ten percent. So basically, if you'd wear a suit and had three concealment, you would have like a fuck ton of dodge. So and then ace, you gain one percent dodge chance up to every one point of concealment, uh, under thirty-five up to ten percent. So, increases it even more, which is really, really cool. Uh, so, yeah, that is the Artful Dodger. Once again, I'm going to take off all these skills here. So, I can go into the Silent Killer, which is going to be the most interesting one. I'm just going to unlock all of these before I explain them. So, second wind. When your armor breaks, your movement speed is increased by 30% for 5 seconds. This is freaking awesome. So, you're in those situations when um, your armor's down. You're like, oh, shit, I need to get out of here. This is helpful because this increases your freaking armor rate massively. Uh, not at your armor rate, so it increases your speed massively so you can get the hell out of there. Then, this effect also applies to your crew when triggered. So, if you uh, run out of armor, your whole crew gets a 30% um, speed increase. I might have to test that out with someone in game and see if that's actually true. Or maybe it just applies to the whole team. So when someone's armor goes down, because you have second wind, that person will then get a 30% uh, speed increase. That's really, really cool if that is the case. Or if it's the whole team, that's just OP. <laughs> uh, optical illusions. So 
you are 45% less likely to be targeted by enemies. So that's pretty much, um, yeah, that's kind of like a stealthy build thing as well. So, um, yeah, kind of like Chameleon. It was like the old Chameleon, I guess. Or it was kind of like Shinobi. So if you had a uh, sneak, uh, crouch, you'd 35% less likely to be targeted by enemies. But now it's 45%. So, for stealth, I guess this would be really, really good. Um, so, if you're 45% less likely to be targeted by your enemies, then that's really good. Or if, or if it's in a loud situation, they wouldn't target you, they target your teammates. That's kind of okay, because then, that if that your teammates are all getting attacked, you then have the opportunity to take them out whilst they're... For example, if I was there with this perk, then someone was attacking my mate, I can then... If they'd all turn around, I can then shoot them and kill them all in the room, and that would just help out the team a lot. That's actually a really good skill, um, if someone was to do that. Um, so, the Professional, you gain 8 weapon stability and 100% snap to zoom speed. Uh, and you gain 12 weapon accuracy with silenced weapons. So, these two are the big ones. So, Specialized Killing. You gain 15% damage with all silenced weapons. And you deal an additional 50% damage with all silenced weapons. That shit has not changed. You get 30% of um, damage with silenced weapons. Absolutely insane, and I even made a um, a build here. As you see, Silent Killer. Um, see the damage. See, everyone thought the M three O eight had a lot of damage on it, right? And everyone thought it had a lot of damage. And if you put Silent Killer, it was the most powerful weapon. It is not. Look here, two hundred and fourteen point six, and with the skill with um, Silent Killer, fifty five point six. Now we look at this gun here, which is the, ah, uh, I can't remember what this is called, like the, ah, uh, AMR, I believe it's called, uh, I can't remember. But look at the damage, it's plus four more damage. Plus 4.1 damage, which is a lot of damage if you think about it. But then, Silent Killer, if you would have it with a sniper, obviously it'd be way better. And obviously with the Barret, it just destroys, that's 3,000 damage, that's insane, man. But yeah, that's all of the... I just wanted to make that a good example because Silent Killer is very popular. It's quite popular. I see a lot of people use it, um, including myself, because it's just so good. But anyway, let's just stop about that. Let's keep going. So, low blow, I don't think has changed as well. You gain 3% critical hit chance for every 3 points of concealment, under 35, 35 up to 30%. You gain 3% critical chance... Uh, Critical hit chance, sorry, for every one point of concealment under 35 up to 30%. So, um, this doesn't affect grenade launchers. So, what this means, it just says it right there. I don't really have a great explanation for that. So, you gain 3% critical hit chance for every three points of concealment under 35 up to 30. Figure that out. Um, it's like nearly 40 minutes into the recording. I'm si like, this is insane. Uh, if you do not lose any armor or health for 4 seconds, you gain 35% critical hit chance for 6 seconds. That's kind of useful. That's kind of useful. So, if you don't lose any armor or health for 4 seconds, so if you just camp in a corner, don't, don't, don't like, take any damage. You can just do 35% critical hit chance every 6 seconds. That's really, really cool. And then the ace version is the critical hit chance duration is increased to 18 seconds. So instead of 6, it's 18 seconds. So, like, double and a bit of the increased time. That's really, really cool. So that is um, Ghost. That covers Ghost, guys. And now, finally, we're on to Fugitive. So we have Gunslinger, Revenant, and Brawler. These are the uh, Fugitive skills. So, we're going to start with Gunslinger. We have Equilibrium, which is basically decreases the time it takes to draw holster pistols by 80%. And it increases your weapon accuracy with pistols. So, Equilibrium has changed. The basic one was it does more damage when you have pistols. And it, yeah, and it does dam more damage over time, I believe. Akimbo, so your Akimbo weapon stability penalty is reduced by 8% and then your Akimbo ability stability is, is reduced by an additional 8 and they also have a chance of 50% um, increased ammo capacity. That's, well not, not an increased chance, sorry, it has 50% increased ammo capacity. That's really good, if you were to have like the dual AKs which run out of ammo really, really quickly, put this Akimbo weapon on and it is plus 50% more ammo, so that's really cool. Gunner, your pistol magazine sizes are increased every 5 bullets, and then you gain a 50% increased fire rate with uh, all the pistols, so that's like 
really cool. For example, the mini Shimano pistols already have a really in massive fire rate. Um, so even in put a Kimbo and gun nut together, that's just insane. You'll be spraying and praying for days with the Kimbo weapons. One-handed talent. The base damage of all pistol pistols increased by five percent, or by five. Sorry, uh, the base damage of all pistols is increased by additional ten damage. So basically, they swapped equilibrium and one-handed, like with one-handed talent. Actually, no. This is attached to another skill that I can't remember, and this is the new equilibrium, one-handed talent. Then desperado. Each successful pistol hit gives you a ten percent increase accuracy bonus for ten seconds and can stack four times. And the ace is you can reload pistols 50% faster. That's kind of the useful thing because um, each pistol hit gives you 10% increased accuracy. If you're accurate with your pistols, that's so useful. Um, that's really good, actually. And the last skill is trigger happy. So for every hit with a pistol, you gain 20% damage boost that lasts for 2 seconds and stacks it to 4 times. Increase the damage boost duration by 10 seconds. So that's that's just super. That's just, that's just, just a crazy thing. Crazy thing. Um, so every pistol hit you gain 20% more damage and it just stacks and stacks up to if it stacks up to four times That's 80% of damage we're dealing so think about that for a second if you had like um, the the um, if You've had silent killer with this uh, with just pistols. That's Absolutely insane think about it with the baby deagle that would just just be one shot everything like two shots on a dozer probably that's insane um, but Anyway, we're gonna take all that off that is Gunslinger, that's all for your pistols. If you like pistols, use Gunslinger. Um, Revenants, we have 9 lives. So you, increase the, uh, you gain a 50% increase your bleed out health, and you gain the ability to go down one more time before going into custody. So 9 lives previously, if I'm not wrong, it was quite um, famous in the community for being kind of a BS kind of um, skill. Because what this would do in the older version, was if you were to go down, you get a chance to just go up randomly and get back up randomly. So that's actually uh, that would be, that'd be pretty OP. I don't know if it's or is it this one? It's this one, Fane of Death. But um, actually, I'm gonna cover that in a bit. So nine lives is swap with Fane of Death. I will show you that in a minute. Up you go. So you take 30% less damage for 10 seconds after being revived. You gain 50% of your maximum health after being revived. So what this basically means is that um, usually if you uh, get up in like overkill um, difficulty, you get like half your health back, and it increases by an extra 15%. 15%. That's actually really cool. Running from death, you reload and swap weapons 100% faster for 10 seconds after being revived. You move 30% faster for 10 seconds after being revived, which is the ace version. So yet again, pretty useful uh, skill there. Uh, not too sure what to say. But yeah, we're going to move on. <laughs> Swan Song, obviously everyone knows Swan Song, so basically when you get down, instead of instantly going down, you have the ability to keep fighting for 3 seconds, and with the aced version, you have 6 seconds, and ammunition won't be depleted, so you can just spray and pray with Swan Song. I think it was like 8 seconds that you were up for before, so you might have nerfed Swan Song a bit, but if you get tased, then it resets Swan Song, so I don't know if they fixed that, but if they haven't fixed it, that's pretty decent. Uh, then we have Messiah. While in bleed out, you can revive yourself if you kill an enemy. You only have one charge. Your Messiah charge is replaced whenever you use a Doctor Bag. So basically, what this means is that, for example, if you went down and then got revived for your teammates, your Messiah isn't used, okay? But if you went down the other time and then shot uh, or killed an enemy, you'd get back up instantly. And then if you were to go down again after that, if you were to shoot an enemy, nothing would happen because you already have used that charge, okay? But then when you get up again, if you go to a doctor bag, then go down, then because you have used a doctor bag, it would also charge up your messiah, which means that you have that one charge left to shoot an enemy and get back up. So this is really, really useful. For, if you're using Swan Song, then messiah, that is just absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. But let's take all these points out real quick. Uh, I'm going to ace that because it looks really cool with them all in the bottom there. I'm sorry. Um... Blood th oh, so we have, sorry, we have martial arts, which is you take 50% less damage from all melee attacks because of training. You are 50% more likely to knock down enemies with a melee strike. So basically, it just makes your melees OP as sh I had to pause for a second there, guys. Sorry if it like cut a bit because it took a little bit of a break. Um, blah, I near the end of the video. I couldn't hold on till the end. We're going to carry on real quick. So martial arts, I told you about that. Let's move on to pumping iron. So... 
Pumping Iron, your melee attacks against non-special enemies do 50% more damage. Your melee attacks against special en enemies do 50% more damage. So, this basically increases your melee attack um, damage, which is really good. Bloodthirst, every kill you get will increase your next melee attack damage by 100% up to a maximum of 300%. So, so you kill an enemy you, and you use your melee, it increases the damage, basically. Then, oh, pardon me. The ace version, whenever you kill an enemy with a melee attack, you gain a 50% increase in reload speed for 10 seconds. So, that's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. I mean, um, if you were to, like, shoot a gun and then kill someone with a melee attack, so you gain 50% reload speed, just so then you can reload and then get back to shooting again. Like, if you run out of ammo and then there's a guy in front of you, just melee them and you get your, um, you get... To, uh, bonus reload speed is really cool. Counter Strike Global Offensive. I'm joking. Um, when charging your melee weapon, you will counter attack enemies. You see, this is the one I didn't really understand because we already have a counter against cloakers, which is the taser. I mean, if you were to buy the so called pack, you basically have a taser. And actually, no, they have released a free. Is it a free um, item? Let me, let me double check. There is now a new melee weapon. That is basically the buzzer, but it's knuckles now. I will not continue till I find this weapon. There it is. There it is. This is free, I believe. I think this is a free item. Yeah, it's a free item. This is basically this is basically the taser has a uh, is a, has a um a bigger charge up rate. So basically, you might as well just go with the taser. But if you don't have enough money to buy the golden green casino pack then that is absolutely cool you might as well just use this to counter tasers and stuff and to counter cloakers because cloaks are the real bitch so really counter strike not that helpful um berserker the lower your health the more damage you do when your health is below 50 percent you will do up to 250 percent more melee and sword damage this is what i was talking about earlier with the swords that's what i was talking about earlier with saw massacre and berserker that shit is crazy that is op as shit but now a final final one is frenzy. You only get 30% of your maximum health and cannot heal above it. But you can take 30% less damage and and healing received is reduced by 75%. The health damage taken is now reduced by 60% and healing received is reduced by 50%. What? What? So basically, you only get 30% of your maximum health and cannot heal above it. But you can take 30% less damage and healing received is reduced by 75%. Oh, my mind is confused. My mind is confused with that. I have no idea what to make of that. Guys, let me know what you make of that. So I guess you get more health, but you can't heal above 30%. That's 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 just that's weird. That's a weird skill. But anyway, those are the skills broken down, guys. I that took up so much of my time, but those are all of the skill trees broken down into columns. I showed you each individual skill in this one video so you guys wouldn't have to do it yourself. Um, I will put on um, at the start of the video if you wanted to know a specific tree. Like I probably said this at the start as well. But each specific tree, if you want to re-watch a specific tree that I covered, just click on in the um, description below. I would have time marked each individual skill tree that I covered. So, for example, if you if you just didn't, if you don't give a shit about Mastermind and Enforcer, or, oh, I want to know about the Ghost skill tree, you know, I will time mark it. You go to that time mark, and I will have covered the skill tree of Ghost. So, don't worry there, guys. But anyway, that wraps up today's video. I didn't get around to doing specific skill trees, but guys, trust me, in another video, I will definitely be coming covering certain skills and if you want me to cover a certain skill let me know in the comments below and i will feature your skill and your comment in the next video and say this is the person who gave me the idea but i will be doing this um specific my my specific skill trees as well but if you have a specific skill tr uh, skill tree and a build that you want me to cover let me know i will happily do it for you dude so that is gonna wrap up the video guys thanks for watching it's been so lengthy and i'll see you in the next video take it easy and goodbye I am fucking tired.